Assume that the amounts of weight that male college students gain during their freshman year are normally distributed with a mean of 1.2 kilograms and a standard deviation of 5.3 kilograms. We're going to complete parts A through C below. <clears throat> In part A it says that if one male college student is randomly selected, find the probability that he gains between 0 kilograms and 3 kilograms during freshman year. Okay, so notice that an individual value from a normally distributed population has been chosen. So therefore, we're going to use the population distribution to determine the probability. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to draw and sketch our graph. So we're going to go ahead and draw our bell curve. And then we're going to designate the mean. So we know the mean here is given to be 1.2 kilograms and then we know that the standard deviation is also given to be 5.3 kilograms okay so what we want to do is we want to be able to find the probability that one male college student is randomly selected between 0 kilograms and 3 kilograms so that means to the left over here we would have uh, x1 which would represent 0 and then to the right of that, we're going to have x2, which is equal to 3 kilograms. So that means that we're going to draw what we want to find in between. So we are looking for the area that's in between those two values. Okay. So in order to do that, we're going to have to find two z-scores. Okay. So two z-scores, one for when x1 is equal to 0, and the other one was when x2 is equal to 3. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know that we have a, uh, for, to find z-score 1, we know x1 is equal to 0. We know that the mean is equal to 1.2. And we know that the standard deviation is equal to 5.3. Let's just make a little room here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and then put in our formula. So to find z-score 1, it's going to equal x1 minus the mean over the standard deviation. So we know x1 is equal to 0. And then we're going to subtract the mean, which is 1.2 and then we're going to divide that by 5.3 and then we're going to round that to two decimal places to find the first z-score. So if we take 0 and then subtract 1.2 and then we're going to divide that by 5.3 well that's going to give us a z-score rounded to two decimal places is negative 0 0.23 so negative 0 0.23 Okay, now we want to find the other z-score where the second x value is equal to 3. Again, the mean is 1.2 and the standard deviation is 5.3. So let's find that second z-score and that's going to equal x2 minus the mean over the standard deviation. So we know x2 is equal to 3 minus 1.2 and then we're going to divide that by 5.3 and then we're going to round that to two decimal places so if we take 3 subtract 1.2 and then divide that answer by 5.3 we're going to round that to two decimal places which gives us 0 0.34 okay so now we know what our z scores are so let's just go ahead and label it on our graph with the z-axis. So with the z-axis we know that the mean is 0. We know the z-score for uh, the value of the data value x being 0 we found to be negative 0 0.23 and then z-score 2 is equal to 0 0.34. So what we want to do is we want to find the area that's in between those two values. So what we're looking for is the probability that 
the area is going to be in between these values of the z-score. And so in order to do that, we're going to use Stack Crunch. So let's go ahead and open up Stack Crunch. Okay, so we're going to go to Stat, select Calculators, and then we're going to scroll all the way down to Normal Distribution. Okay, and so again, what we want to do is we want to find the area that's in between there. So we're going to select Between. Okay, so selecting between, we know that our left z-score is negative 0 0.23, and the z-score on the right is 0 0.34. Let's go ahead and select Compute, and then we get rounded to four decimal places, 0 0.2240. So that's 0 0.2240. Okay, so therefore, that's going to be the probability, so let's put that in there. 0 0.2240 and there is the probability for one male college student that's randomly selected. Now it says if nine male college students are randomly selected, find the probability that their mean weight gain during freshman year is between zero kilograms and three kilograms. So let's take a look at that here. So in this case, the desired probability is for the mean of a sample of nine male college students, and therefore we're gonna use the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem applies when the population has a normal distribution or the sample size n is greater than 30. Since we have, and it's telling us that we have a normally distributed uh, situation here, we can then use the central uh, limit theorem. And the distribution of the sample means is approximately normal with the mean given by the following. So we know the mean of the sample means is equal to the mean and the standard deviation is given by the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and look at our bell curve. So when we draw our bell curve again we have the same mean which is the given one that we have which is 1.2 Again, we know that the value of x1 is equal to 0. And we know the value of x2 is equal to 3. And just like in a previous example, we're going to find the area that's in between. Okay, but now when we want to find the z-score, we have to take into consideration using the central limit theorem. So what does that mean? That means that we know that x1 is equal to 0. We know that the mean of the sample means is equal to the mean, which is 1.2. Okay, we also know that the value of n is equal to 9, since we're talking about 9 male college students that are randomly selected. And then the standard deviation of the sample means is equal to the formula of when we have the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, which is the same thing as the standard deviation of 5.3 divided by the square root of 9. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the z-score 1. Okay, so to find z-score 1, Again, we're using the following formula. x minus the mean of the sample means divided by the standard deviation of the sample means. And so we have that. So this is x1 here. So we have 0 minus the mean of 1.2. And then we're dividing that by 5.3 divided by the square root of 9. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have in the numerator, parentheses 0 minus 1.2, 0 minus 1.2, and then we're dividing that by parentheses 5.3 divided by the square root of 9, and then parentheses, and then let's round that to two decimal places, so that's negative 0 0.68.
okay? And so now we're going to find z-score 2. And the only thing that changes with our values is now x2 now is going to equal 3. So again, using the same formula, we have x2 minus the mean of the sample means over the standard deviation of the sample means. So x2 is going to be 3 minus 1.2. And then we're dividing that by, again, 5.3 times the square root of 9. So let's go ahead and do that. So in parentheses, we have 3 minus 1.2. And then we're dividing that in parentheses, 5.3 divided by the square root of 9. And then parentheses, and then we get round up to two decimal places is a z-score of 1.02. Okay, so now we can label this on our graph. So using the z-axis, now the mean becomes zero. We know that z1 is equal to negative 0 0.68. And we know that z2 is equal to 1.02. And so just like in our previous step, we want to find the probability where the area is going to be in between the z-scores of negative 0 0.68 and 1.02. And so we can use StatCrunch to determine that. Okay, so now we still have our mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. Now we're going to change our lower limit here to be negative 0.68. And the upper limit of 1.02, and let's go ahead and compute. And now if we round that to four decimal places, we're going to get 0 0.5979. So 0 0.5979. Let's go ahead and put that in here. 0 0.5979. And therefore, that is the probability of the nine male college students that are randomly selected. Now it says, why can the normal distribution be used in part B, even though the sample size does not exceed 30? Well, since the original population, again up here, states that it's normally distributed, the distribution of the sample means is a normal distribution for any sample size. So the answer is going to be D.